Hola, it's Panketsani and Makeda. And we're here in Puerto Viejo, Limón, Costa Rica to bring you video number two of our video ser series, Womb Centered Exercise. In this video, we'll be discussing which exercises are detrimental to your reproductive organs and to your pelvic floor. The first exercise I want to talk about are sit-ups. A lot of women and men are really interested in having really lean abs, a really small waist, right? And so sit-ups is one of the most popular exercises to attain those fitness goals. The thing about sit-ups is that a lot of us already have pelvic floors that are becoming lax, that have don't have a lot of tone, and that don't have flexibility. And this is normal for today's industrialized bodies because we sit in chairs, because we drive cars for hours at a time, because we sit at computers, and because we don't do natural movements like squatting and work on the floor anymore, right? And so when you do sit-ups, you're actually creating too much downward pressure. So your pelvic floor has a natural movement when you're breathing, when you're exercising. The bottom of your pelvic floor is at your pelvic bowl here. Bottom of your pelvis, all interconnected, made up of more than two dozen different muscles. And then your top of the pelvic floor is across here. This is the top, it's the diaphragm. And so when you're breathing, in it expands and out it contracts. And it has this natural expansion and contraction. When you are exercising, one, you need to be conscious of breathing, and two, since these exercises create a lot of downward force, instead of having that natural contraction, we are actually straining and pushing and in turn weakening the pelvic floor. So go ahead and do a sit up for us, Makeda. No, wait, come all the yeah. way up or just a, so, just a crunch? A sit up. So as we see about right here, she's pushing down. Makeda's pushing down and what happens is that her pelvic floor is also being pushed down. With all of this force, you're actually pushing your womb. You're pushing your womb because you're creating. And you can see it. Yeah, and you can see it there. You can see it. And this is the reason why in some classes, um, there are teachers who will tell you when you do, do crunches, actually not sit-ups. <laughs> sit-ups are not really done so much in fitness. It's more crunches where you're just doing this. But with doing sit-ups or crunches, it's important if you're if you are going to do it, to push down on your abs as you're coming up. Because if you notice, and somebody asked me this question too in class, if you notice if I just do it, my ab muscles pop up. See, they're, they're like caving up. I don't know if you can see that. So I have to focus on pushing down to really hold it in. Most people don't do that. Even a lot of times, like most people when they do sit-ups, they're just doing it regular and it is pushing the woman up. So if you are going to do it, you need to push the abs down. But still, I don't think that there's such a great exercise um, anyway because um, it's more important to me to work the abs, the lower part of the abs, where it connects here. Because in real life, I can't really think of too many movements that we do where we need to be doing this in the first place. So working your abs, doing crunches is not an exercise that I give my clients ever. I never give anybody that um, for a different reason, just because I don't think it's the most functional. Um, but after talking to Pankazani about how it can dislocate the womb, it made sense to me. Because when you do it, a lot of times your abs do pop out. And it's just not really, it doesn't make functional sense to me. It doesn't make functional sense to me. Additionally, if you're at the gym and you're doing the seated sit up which basically has a stack of weights and you grab onto it and you're in a chair and then you contract your 
abdominal muscles, you contract them, and you're actually lifting weight while you do that. I am concerned about that exercise because personally I've experienced a lot of pelvic floor tension when doing those exercises and I've experimented a lot throughout the years of going to the gym and trying out various exercises and the one consistent exercise that I have found to drop the womb is that exercise. So not only are you doing a sit-up, a seated sit-up, but you're adding on so much weight. You're adding on so much weight. And when you think about it, when you kind of ponder about, okay, so in real life, what exercise or what movement would this be? It's kind of an unnatural thing. Yeah. So of course it's going to cause imbalance in our bodies. Of course. Yes. It's what functional exercise, you want to think about how it translates into real life activity. So what we do biomechanically in exercise should biomechanically be, should be biomechanically similar to real life activity. And the whole time I'm sitting here, I can't think of one movement where you take weight in life and go down. There are people who might carry weight on their back, but they're just carrying it on their back. They're not going, they're not pulling it, pulling it down and putting that force. Um, and so that can definitely go on to the womb. Um, Fangazani also said that she noticed doing it unloaded without the weight didn't necessarily cause that problem, but with the weight it does. And that's because you know, when the muscles have to really activate, that stress is going on to our wounds. And it's not, I never gave that exercise to my clients because it didn't make functional sense. For me, um, as a strength and conditioning specialist, I give exercises that are gonna help the body perform better. If I don't see how that exercise is gonna make your body perform better, then I don't do it. Bodybuilders do exercises just for the look only. And a lot of bodybuilders are very unhealthy. Um, and now I think a lot of it has to do with the, how they work out, but also how they eat. Like bodybuilding is not about health, it's about working out to make to get this grotesque look um, that has nothing to do with performance. My approach is has everything to do with performance. So doing, sitting in a chair doing this is not going to help you perform better at anything. But now we know it can be detrimental. And not only that, talking about functional exercise, when you lift weights, we lift tons of weights, right, in our lives, carrying a bag of potatoes, carrying a shopping bag, carrying our purses. We're just carrying weights. We're, we're made to bear weight. A lot of folks, like bodybuilders, will lift weights. And what happens sometimes if you don't lift them properly for women is that it actually drops your pelvic floor. So here's my pelvic floor. If I'm doing a regular squat, my pelvic floor is fine. If I'm loaded with weight, I am bearing down here, right? When I, when I want to push up from this position, I want to push up, I'm, ex, I'm exerting force, mm, you know? When that happens, when I'm pushing up, my pelvic floor is being pushed down. And that, yes, we're strengthening our muscles, but it also weakens over time your pelvic floor, which contributes to incontinence. It contributes to hormonal imbalance because your womb is going to be dropped. And so when we're doing these exercises where we have to bear down and carry weights, we need to be conscious of our womb and actually contract. Just as we're contracting the the quads and your upper back and your biceps, just as you're, you're making force, you also push in and up the pelvic floor. And also, can you just turn sideways and do that? Um, so if you notice, if you look at her hips, her hips are neutral. They're not tucked under. So in, the proper technique is important. And now before she pushes up, what I always tell my clients, always before you push up against that weight because right now she has body weight but if she had weight on her that weight is putting pressure on her so always tell them to deeply contract your abs like really squeeze your abs and hold your breath before you push up so she would contract her abs hold her breath and then push up and so you can come up 
Good. And th that form that she was in was the correct form. So you want to stick your hips out. You want the hips to stay neutral, meaning you don't want them to be curved like this. So she squatting here, and she wasn't like this. Some people squat, and if your hip is in the wrong place, like it's tucked under like this, this is also putting your pelvic floor in the wrong place and putting stress on it. So you want to make sure you're in the right form, and then you contract your abs, hold your breath, and push up. So um, that deeply engaging is important. And Pakistani also brought to my attention this whole CrossFit trend of P happens, um, which is crazy because I already, you know, like CrossFit is kind of crazy because they don't have, they don't practice progressions. Like there are progressions um, before you start doing Olympic lifts and plyometrics and jumping off the stuff and doing those crazy exercises. You need to have a basic level of strength first and you have to have perfect technique first. CrossFit doesn't stress that. So there's people who are not strong enough and don't have the right technique doing advanced exercises and you don't engage your muscles properly, like then I guess peeing in yourself happens in that case, but you're not supposed to pee on yourself when you work out. In all my years of being a trainer and working out, I've never known anyone to pee on themselves. I've never peed on myself. That, the only time I've heard of that is if like a woman just had a baby and she has weak pelvic floor, but that should not be happening from working out. And so that's obviously from not engaging the, the abs properly and also not having the strength. And unfortunately, a lot of the women who work out and go to the gym as a regular practice are the folks who come to me with the most tension in the pelvic floor. So before I'm even able to massage and adjust their womb, I'm kind of stuck releasing all of the tension from all of those years of exercise of bearing down. So I think that's what we'll leave you with for today. Um, our next video, we're going to focus on exercises that are good for the womb that will help strengthen it. Um, and so these are just things to keep in mind that for exercises that are detrimental. We, when we exercise, it should not be detrimental. We work out to become stronger and to prevent getting injured. You should not be getting injured in your workouts. Thank you for watching video number two of our series, Womb-Centered Exercise. And I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you practiced some of these things we talked about. We have to get to our workshop here at Matriz Mística. See you at video number three. Bye.